We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is the new minority leader of the Tennessee State Senate, Senator Jeff Yarbrough from here in Nashville. Senator, uh, we'll go back to the, uh, the medical cannabis bill we were talking about. The bill last year seemed to get awfully complicated in setting up how it was going to be done, and I think that made some members uncomfortable or didn't really fully understand what it was going to be. Do you look for Senator Dickerson to make it maybe a, a more simple one this year to get it started? I mean, I think that that would be better. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's always better to, to try to get as as straightforward a proposal as you can so to avoid getting uh, lost on the details. However, this is a, a space where you also do want to be careful about uh, not, not jumping in recklessly into a brand new public policy area. Another issue the legislature may pick up is from here in Nashville, the establishment of a community review board to look into allegations of police uh, mistreatment or, or misconduct. Uh, Nashville voters approved such a board in November. It's in the process of being put together by the city and by the Metro Council. Do you support such a board? Well, I mean, the issue as it comes to the legislature is whether we're going to intervene in community decisions so on these you? boards. And no, the, the, the state should not be intervening with any of the community oversight boards that exist across the state. This is not just some newfangled idea that, that happened in Nashville. Uh, I mean, this is something that's happened in East Tennessee and West Tennessee. Uh, we need to let local governments govern their their local communities. But what without. about setting standards? They did that also on the on the um, uh, Airbnb stuff. They want to set standards across the state. Do you would you would you think the legislature would be in line to set up standards across the state for what boards can do and cannot do? I mean, I don't see it. I don't see a need to do that. If somebody brought a compelling reason to do so, I mean, of course people would consider it. But I don't I don't know what that is. It seems very much driven by an a, a, like a desire to you know, appeal the decision that was made by Nashville's voters. Um, let's also talk about some Supreme Court rulings, one that uh, would allow Tennessee now to get into sports gambling, and that's already being looked at in a lot of states around us and states across the country. Is that a new area for revenue for the state that might be used for what? Uh, well, it very well could be a, an, an area for new revenue, but I think it's something that as much as that Supreme Court decision cleared one legal hur hurdle, uh, I think we do need to look and make sure that we're we don't have a, a hurdle under Tennessee law. Uh, but then, well, even the attorney, if the Attorney General has said there's no need to amend the Constitution further because some people thought you could you couldn't do this because the lottery was the only recognized game of chance, but the. AG says this is not just a game of chance, this actually is some skill in sports gambling, which some people will find interesting with how they've done in doing that. <laughs> so I mean, so, I mean like that's, that, that's not binding, but yes, I mean, I think that we've got to look through what the legal issues are and the way you design such a program. I think that if you're going to go into that, uh, that, that area, we need to be very careful and very thoughtful in the if, way we do it. If we don't do it, aren't we forfeiting a lot of not just sales for sports gambling, but sales of people buying other things, assuming it'll be available in places like uh, convenience stores? The same argument that was used to do the lottery is we're, we're basically driving business across the borders, and Tennessee has lots of borders. Tennessee has lots of borders, and I think it's very much something that we need to consider and look at as to how it's going to be best for not just Tennessee's revenue, but for Tennessee's people. If we do have sports gambling, how should the money be used? You know, I mean, I think that the what remains the biggest underfunded uh, issue in Tennessee is is education, and so uh, I mean that that's a lot of the times where my focus is. But uh, I don't want to 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 prejudge that issue right this second. What about taking more of the sales tax down, particularly taking it completely off food and some other necessities? I think that's an, another thing that we sh we could consider. I think that uh, the challenge on uh, these new sources of revenue is uh, we don't know what the stability of this is. We don't know what this looks like, what the revenue from uh, sports gambling is going to be uh, when it's available in 30, 40 states. It might be overblown. And so, I mean, it's not to say that it's not a real source of revenue, but before you start making long-term physical decisions, I think you that that I think you got to be careful about that you're that you're actually replacing the revenue. As we close, one area of uh, perhaps agreement between you and the governor-elect is having more transparency in government, particularly more Absolutely. open records. Uh, what records need to be open, and what are the chances of getting any of them opened in this last term? 
next term? Um, you know, I mean, I think that the legislature has tried to make movement on this. Uh, I was part of a, a study group on this particular issue to basically start a more rigorous process of reviewing the exceptions to the Open Records Act. Because right now there are like 500 something ex exemptions, uh, which is kind of ridiculous. I mean, the basic rule needs to be that there, that if it's a if it's a government document that it's a public record uh, with very narrow exceptions that need, make sense you need to target which ones you want to remove because with 500 they're going to be they're, they're a lot of they'll gang up and you won't get anything over. right i mean i think that, that that there's a real challenge in figuring out i think what we're trying to do right now is create a process that doesn't that stops the pylon of new rules and starts a review process so that the, the ones that exist can be reviewed methodically with some standards. Senator, thank you. Congratulations thank on you. your new thing for coming on the show. Thank you on your new leadership post and good luck in the next session. Thanks, sir. And thank you for joining us this week on Inside Politics. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.